Be grateful my friends, for there are no imaginary components of our real world. Otherwise, we would have needed a theorem to differentiate between them too. On the other hand, when it comes to mathematics, the Morvra's theorem makes it super easy for us to find the real and imaginary parts. And I'm sure you must be getting a hang of the concept due to our last lesson. But in this video, we will raise the difficulty level and practice this theorem to find real and imaginary parts of fractional complex number that is raised to an integer power n. So let's go. Start by bringing both the numerator and the denominator into their equivalent polar forms so that the given complex fraction looks like this. Take r1 common from the numerator and r2 from the denominator. Now, shift the term of numerator up here and change the sign of its power. Now, it's time to apply De Moivre's theorem on both the brackets, according to which the power gets removed and becomes product with theta. Note that the cos of minus theta equals cos theta and sine of minus theta equals minus sine theta. Apply that here and the equation will look like this. Next, multiply both of these brackets to get this large expression which is easily reducible using these trigonometric formulas. By referring n theta 1 as alpha and n theta 2 as beta, the first expression is reduced to cos alpha minus beta and second is reduced to sin alpha minus beta. Hence, the expression simply becomes this. Now, just take n common and multiply these brackets with r1 upon r2 again. Finally, we got our real and imaginary parts of the given expression. And at this point, I think it's very clear what r and theta is. I mean, you must have remembered the formula we derived previously, right? So, r1 and theta1 becomes this, whereas r2 and theta2 becomes this. Got it, my friends? Now, test yourself by solving a similar example where we have a fractional complex number raised to power 5 and even the objective is unchanged. Let's do this. We have our numerator and the denominator. The numerator has two parts where one can be represented with x and the second part with iota can be represented with y. Similarly, the same can be done for our denominator, right? Let's call the x and y coordinates of our numerator as x1 and y1 and of our denominator as x2 and y2. It will remove any confusion since x and iota y in the polar form are represented like this. Therefore, these complex numbers can be expressed like this in the polar form. We just saw the formulas of r and theta for such a case. Thus, we can easily find the values of r1 and theta1 by substituting the values of x1 and y1. The same goes for r2 and theta2 as well. Now that we have it, we can plug these in here like this. Next, cancel the two and apply the power individually on the numerator and the denominator. We can bring the numerator to the upside by changing the power to negative 5. Time to apply the de Morvre's theorem. It says to multiply the power with theta. Also, multiply the numbers in argument to get this simplified form. Now, we learned in the same lesson that cos of minus theta is cos theta and sine minus theta is minus sine theta. Let's apply it here too. Notice something in the expression? The values in the brackets are the same. Hence, we can write it once with a square. It means the same thing. Now, simply substitute the values of cos 300 and sine 300. Expand by using a plus b whole squared formula and simplify. And as you can see, my friends, we have finally identified the real and the imaginary part. Good job, guys. I know it can seem confusing. So, Feel free to go through these lessons again. Practice will only help us move towards your goal. Good luck my friends.